So today we're going to look at integration in the workplace and effect. Oh yeah, no, God, I can't keep that going. What we're doing is method of mixtures, i.e. putting something hot in something cold and seeing what happens and what we can learn from it. So this is what we need. We need a weighing scales, a clinical thermometer and a thermos flask and of course a cooker, something to heat things up with. Now you don't have to use a thermos. There's all sorts of things you can use. This is a sippy cup and the clinical thermometer well you know what that is we also need coins now you can use different types of coins in fact you can repeat the experiment for different types of coins if you want so here we are now this is the beginning of the experiment i am heating up the water in the water i have put some coins and i've put them in a convenient uh, sieve well actually it's a tea strainer to be honest so i can get them out easily all in one go obviously ideally i'd put them in a test tube or some other thing but i don't have anything like that so i'm going to have to sort of like allow for mistakes made when there is simply too much water it means some of this water will be transferred with the coins into the vacuum flask and i really can't help this i had no other way of doing it if you have a way of doing it well well done aren't you clever well i haven't so live with it it's an inaccuracy okay so we start off by zeroing Oh yeah, I'm zeroing. I'm also holding the thing in my hands, which is why it's uh, shaking around so much. So now I've zeroed the weighing scales and I put the, uh, obviously, water into the vacuum flask. And I'm going to have to use some hot water here. The reason I have to use hot water is my clinical thermometer has a limited range. It only works above 25 degrees, which is, of course, not ideal. Because ideally you'd cool the water in this experiment because it's being heated so that heat which is gained below room temperature, we balance by heat uh, lost above room temperature, and the two will cancel each other out. But this time I'm having to use a little bit of hot water just to heat it up so that I can use this type of thermometer. Without thermometers, you wouldn't do this. You'd put ice or you'd, you'd cool the water in the fridge beforehand so that heat gained below room temperature will be balanced by heat lost above room temperature. And that's why we do it. I'd also like to point out that I am wearing clothes. Uh, I have a short sleeve shirt on. It's quite warm here. Um, uh, under the American Constitution, I do have a right to do this. If you look at Article 2, it says you have the right to bear arms. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Please, please, next slide. Right. So we read off how much in grams we put into the vacuum flask simply and then we re-zero the scale we just re-zero it to the next stage and then we've got the water boiling and you are nicely boiling away and the coins you assume now must be at 100 degrees you've got to leave it boiling for a while as i show you and then you take the temperature this is the temperature before the coins are added they're boiling at this stage if you look you can just see the the, the stove's on so take it out there you are, 33 degrees. I didn't, absolutely didn't do anything to that and just took a picture even just in case you were thinking I'd uh, messed it up. No, no, no. Now I've got to put the coins, which are at 100 degrees. Now, obviously, I'm going to be using a tea towel and great deal of care. I've done it incredibly slowly. Really, look how slowly I'm working. There you are. Oh, well, that was clever. I've used the other hand to put, you know, don't worry about it. It didn't hurt that much. Only a small blister. So I'm trying to get some of the water off, but I'm also trying to do it quickly. So here it goes. Yeah, obviously you can see by the speed of the water. I've actually got most of the coins in. Whoa! There you go. And then I tipped some water in, which was stupid of me. But that was basically it. Now I take the temperature afterwards. I take the temperature and it's gone to 35.1. So it's gone up by 2.1 degrees. And because I zeroed it, the mass now showing on the weighing scale is actually the mass of the coins, 51 grams of coins. So here we go with the calculations. This is it, right. So I'm gonna start writing now. There you, you can just catch actually a bit of clothing uh, uh, on the edges, see if you can spot it, because that proves I've been, you know, I'm dressed in clothes. So heat lost by the coins must be equal to heat gained by the water. 
approximately, obviously allowing for the fact I've added some water, which I shouldn't have done, which some water's gone to the container, but they might balance each other out. And also the fact that it's above room temperature. So what's the formula? Of course, it's MC delta theta both sides. I've got no boiling or freezing, so I've only MC delta theta for the coins and for the water. So the left-hand side's for the coins, and we usually put in a little subscript there, your little C for coin. Sometimes it's for calorimeter. It always seems to be C, doesn't it? And copper's the other one. What always you C. Of course, there would be something there for what I'm pointing there, which would be, yeah, it's not there, I know. That's for the container, for the calorimeter, but it's not there because uh, we had no way of knowing it. We just assume it doesn't consume any heat or has a good insulating properties. Then we'll write down the figures. It's uh, obviously the mass is 51 grams. C is our unknown. And our temperature difference for the coins is 100, which they were in the boiling water, down to 35.1, which I've added an interesting three there, if you notice. Now the mass of the water, 235 it was. C for the water, 4180. And finally, and I hope I'll get my hand out the way, there you are, 2.1 is the temperature difference for the water. So now all I have to do is a little bit of manipulation. Yes, you are going to see me manipulate, but you're not going to have to tell anybody about it. There is 235. There is the four. Yeah, I'm just writing out the line, aren't I? Oh God, geez, I, do, I could have speeded this bit up. OK, so there we go. Uh, put everything in, put everything in, and then I do it all in my head. So this is me. I'm going to, I'm going to start humming now. Uh, mentally sort of preparing myself to do... Oh, no, I used a calculator. Yeah, OK, I used a calculator. Fair enough. Right, so now I'm just off screen. I'm pressing all the buttons, but actually I am actually doing it real time. I have absolutely no idea why I did this. But just to remember that the precautions for this are lagging, to slightly cool the water down, and always to... Um, uh, allow for the container, unless it's an insulated container which has a very low or negligible specific heat capacity, right? And the, the answer is two, uh, 600, two what? 623 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Yeah, oh, I see, yeah, what metal are the coins made of? Oh, can we tell that? Is that possible? Oh, I think you're overdoing the acting now. Oh, I think you're overdoing it. Yeah, I think, yeah, stop now, go on, stop it, stop it. So here is a chart. We've got 623. You can see it's somewhere between copper and aluminium, somewhere between copper, aluminium, iron. Yeah, well, it's actually going to be some sort of alloy. So I think we've got a good answer. If I'd have got 7,000, that would have been wrong. 600? That's not so bad. I like it. I like it. So this is the apparatus you would normally use. As you can see, there's a calorimeter, a thermometer, and you heat up the copper rivets at the far side inside a test tube so they don't get wet and then you transfer them now usually you say you weigh the calorimeter the calorimeter plus water and then you weigh uh, it afterwards to get the weight of the copper rivets and you take the temperature before and after the experiment you lag it and you slightly cool the water this is called the mechanical method and as you can see you've now added the uh, copper rivets to the water and that's basically it. This is the diagram I want you to remember. The experiment I want you to remember how it actually is. Oh, these are fun. I'm enjoying these.